Let's talk about all-inclusive resorts, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hi, this is Professor Frank Nunez, and if you watch my channel, you probably know that I'm located in the Dominican Republic. Now, Dominican Republic is a place that is famous for the all-inclusive resorts. If you live anywhere in the Western world, you will know that the Dominican Republic is famous for its all-inclusive resorts. Now, when I was growing up, I thought that that was the norm everywhere, that the, the usual hotel that people go to and stay at as a tourist is an all-inclusive resource. And I thought that that was like that all around the world, uh, first and foremost. But as I grew up and then, then once I had the chance to work in one of these uh, corporations, I realized that that was not the case. As a matter of fact, I learned about the fact that the Dominican Republic was one of the first countries to actually actively encourage the construction and operation of massive all-inclusive resort facilities. They are indeed the core of the Dominican Republic's hospitality industry. And many countries have copied this model to a T. Now, what are the pros and cons of such facilities? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Are they good for the country? Let's talk about that. Let's begin with the pros. One of the pros of staying at an all-inclusive resort is the fact that it helps you budget your vacations better. Because when you fact, they, they factor in all the meals, accommodation, entertainment, and once you have a clear idea that, you know, this is already factored in, I've already paid for this, I don't have to worry about this, it's easier to budget those things. Because when you're going to a destination that you're not familiar with, that you've never been to, yes, you can do a lot of research online, but that has its limitations also. There are a lot of things that you don't know what to expect. Now, once everything has been taken care of, it's great for budgeting. Now, having said that, you know that you have to do your due diligence because in terms of quality, you're going to get what you pay for. And you know what they say, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Some all-inclusive resorts give you, you know, poor quality food. They give you the, the, the bare minimum and you have to you know watch out for those things. However, you also find uh, very good quality all-inclusive resorts. I've been to all-inclusive resorts and everything from the food, the drinks, the service, the entertainment has been top-notch. And I've gotten great value for the cash that I paid. So you have to do your due diligence. And if something is very cheap, even sometimes when you go to these uh, hotels that have five-star ratings and stuff, and they offer these really low discounts, especially when, the, when you're low season, they call it the, the low season or off season. My goodness, they have very few people and they try to attract as many people as they can with very low prices. However, you know that what you're going to get is not their usual top notch A quality service. And another plus is that you inside the resort, you get a lot of variety in terms of the kind of restaurants that you get, the kind of entertainment that you get. You get French food, Japanese food, local food, local Dominican food. If you're here, if you go to Colombia, you're going to get great uh, uh, Colombian restaurants inside the resort, uh, concerts, magic tricks. <laughs> they go out of their way to keep you entertained. And that's the second uh, strong point that I want to talk about, how they try to they go out of their way to make sure that you're entertained. That you you're done you don't get bored you get aerobics by the beach you get bowling facilities everybody's usually the staff is very friendly and then you get the music you get the 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 shows and everything they go out of the way that's the second strong point about all inclusive resorts and third there's the aspect of security the fact that you don't need to leave the resort premises for so many things like restaurants or entertainment it means that you are less exposed. But don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you're going to fly all over to another country and just stay within the premises of the hotel. What I'm saying is the less you need to do that for certain things. If you're the kind of person that just wants to relax and, and chill and, and you prefer you know, the comfort and the safety of a resort, you have that choice. I mean, it's great that you have the choice of, okay, I'm going to stay here. And if I want to venture out, you do that. I'm the kind of person that I like to venture out. 
but I like to have that choice to, to know that, hey, if I want to just stay here and eat here, I have a lot of good options to go for. And that gives me the opportunity to transition to the disadvantages of uh, going to an all-inclusive resort. And he said, if you're the kind of person that likes to venture out of the hotel and not stay in, you're going to end up overpaying anyways. Why? Because all the things that were factored in, in the package that you didn't use, all the meals that you didn't eat, and all the entertainment and amenities that you didn't use, you've already paid for them in the package. And if you don't use them, and then you go outside of the resort and pay for them outside, you go to get a massage, a meal, or a concert, those things were already factored in, and yet you go out and pay for them again. So if you have that kind of spirit, your vacation ends up costing even more. You would have been better off just renting an Airbnb or a hotel that only offers you bread and breakfast. I kind of touched that on a previous point, but yeah, you have to know that resorts go out of their way to cut costs. So that might be reflected in the quality of food and the quality of the amenities that, that you receive at the hotel. If you pay for uh, something that is a higher end, you probably won't feel that. But if you go to one of those cheap resorts, you will see that the drinks, they're, they're not as good as uh, you're used to. And uh, the food, you, the buffet will not have that many options. So that's something to consider. And now I want to talk about the ugly. And is that the fact that once you go to an all-inclusive resort, the, as I mentioned before, you're not going to venture out to use restaurants and massage parlors and amenities outside the resort. Hence, the money that you bring in doesn't really have that multiplying effect and that social impact in the communities outside the resort. All-inclusive resorts are often located in places, countries, communities that are developing or maybe poor. The people who work there, they work for very low wages and the, the businesses that are around the corner from the hotel or surrounding the resort, they don't benefit that much from people going out there and eating as you would do, for example, in a city hotel where you have to <laughs> go to restaurants and you have to go to venues outside and use those services. Hence, maybe you will help out a mom and pop's restaurant that's across the street or, or in the vicinity of the resort. And as I said before, people who work there in those hotels, they pay, uh, they get very low pay, very low wages. However, I have to say that the country at the end of the day ends up being better off with a place, with a business like that, than if they, there wasn't uh, an all-inclusive resort. Because if you think about it, you wouldn't have gone there anyways if the all-inclusive resort hadn't been there. So it's just something to consider. Maybe if you want to help the, the, the locals step out and, you know, try to spend a few dollars outside of the resort. And that's going to help them too. And they're going to really, really, truly appreciate that. So that's my take on the all-inclusive resorts. If you have any experiences that you want to tell us about, if there's something that I missed that, I, that you think I should have mentioned, please leave it in the comments section below. And if you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, please drop a like, and I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, share the video with somebody that you think might benefit uh, from listen, listening to my perspective. If you disagree with me, you feel free to comment it on the comment section too. Professor Frank Nunez, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful rest of the day.